Welcome back, my fine young Drosophilia melangoster. We're going to try playing mirrors a second time without the bizarre audio effects from the first one. First thing we want to do is learn how to do some angles using Google products. They're not terribly good at it. So here's one way of measuring angles if you need. My specially patented protractor, which if painted upon makes a wonderful oriental fan or Asian fan. I'm not sure what the current terms are. But anyway, there's a protractor. You probably won't need it. There's another nifty way of measuring angles though, using a square grid. I'm going to click on a line here, and this is what I want you to do. You're going to take this, you're going to hold the shift key down, and you'll find when you hold the shift key down, you can only jump and it looks like 15 degree in increments. There's a line. Fatten it up for my old eyes, and even nicer, if you go into Format, Format, Options, you can hit Drop Shadow, and that kind of pops it off the background. How are we going to measure an angle? Well, let's draw a second line, and I want you to take it not anywhere. I want you to go directly on one of those intersections, like that. Now we're going to display the angle, and you're going to go into shapes and pick this crescent or arc here. Hold the shift key down again, and the arc will be based on a circle. If you don't hold the shift key down, you'll get an oval. Now we're going to turn this into the arc you see in math class for an angle. I'm going to bring it over here, and it looks kind of funny, so I'm going to rotate it a bit and maybe do this yeah. and again remember my tired old eyes beef it up there's an angle how do I make the exact opposite angle on the other side that's something you're gonna have to do well in class I would have the students do this count squares there's four squares down so to repeat the angle on the other side just go the same distance on the other side, like that. Go down four squares. You see that? So you just need to do this. Because repeating that angle is going to become really important. Okay, now we have two identical angles. And that's all I want you to put on this slide. Hey, nope, grab the wrong one. I'm going to grab this one and bring her down and just rotate her a bit there. Just get it, get her all lined up correctly. There we go. We've made two identical angles. Now, guess what? There's an even simpler trick for this one. Watch this. It's really nifty. I click on that. I press Control C, then Control V, as in Victor. There's a copy. Now, watch. Arrange rotate, flip vertical, bingo! You've got the reflected angle. This is something we can do remote, we just can't do in class. And if you're on a Chromebook and no mouse, it's a real pain. So that's one way of making an identical angle, is using grid squares, or just this flipping the vertical or the horizontal to make the mirror image angle. Make sure you can do that. Another way of getting an exact angle is just pulling off a little bit of a trick. So let's draw a line here. Any angle, doesn't matter. And we want to get its angle. There's no reporting tool on it. But Google has a sneaky way we can flip it in there. It will tell you the angle on objects like this. So I can start to turn it and you can see it reporting the angle as we go, okay? Here's the trick though. The trick is when you click on that pip, go really far away from it. And then when you rotate the angle, you get much finer control, you see? If I don't do that, if I go in tight, then any motion on my hand really makes it tip back and forth but if you go really far away, you have much better control. And what I'm trying to do is I'll rotate that box till it matches the line. 
looks like 343.7. Let's bring it in here and see how close I got. That's pretty darn close, isn't it? And you go, but I forgot the angle. Oh well, there it is. And you kind of go, okay, so 343.5. Let's call it 345 degrees. Well, what is that? Well, it means the angle, it started off at 360, and then it went to 345, so that's a 15 degree rotation. I'm going to erase this and show you the direction where it's a little bit easier. If I do the line like this, and I go in here, and I take a square, <clears throat> and I'm going to go way out here, and I'm going to turn it till it looks by eye, looks to be about 13 degrees. I'm going to bring that in here, and it's off a little bit, so I can click on this again. And I can really try to tidy that up there. Oh, maybe is that it? 13.4. So if you want to see the angle again, just click on that pip. And you'll see it there, 14.7. It's nothing super accurate, but it's a quick way of getting your angle when you don't have any other tools available to you. And I, I, I just round to the nearest 5 degrees. So make sure you leave behind something that shows me this. We're going to take a look at the flat mirrors themselves now. Plain mirrors does not mean meow kind of mirrors like on a plane. I, what it means is <laughs> flat mirrors. <laughs> flat mirrors. And the first thing we need to do is take a look at what the symbols on the mirror mean. The flat side of the mirror is the reflective side. These little diagonal markings, that's the back side of the mirror. And we have to have something to measure the angles on the mirror. And we do that with a vertical or perpendicular line off the mirror. So clicking the line tool, go here, press shift, and it will come straight off the mirror. I made the mirror vertical. Beef it up a little bit for me. Drop shadow it and you have your perpendicular. Now, <coughs> what's the indicator in math class for perpendicular? You select a square, hold the shift key down, and there's your little right angle symbol. But it's filled in, so get rid of the fill. And there you have your perpendicular. The perpendicular is also called a right angle. Okay? It's also called 90 degrees. It's also called orthogonal. And normal. All are the same thing. This is because, uh, if you remember chemists, chemists were like, uh, we have acids and bases. You want to mess over the kids? Yeah, yeah. What do you want to do? Why don't we name bases? Bases, alkalines, and antacids. That'll slow them down. We'll give them three names for the same thing. Well, that's cool. Then the math teacher heard about it going, did you hear the chemist went ahead and named, named a base three different things just to screw the kids over? Yeah, yeah. You want to do that? Yeah. Why don't we give a 90-degree angle five separate names? <laughs> yeah. So you have to learn the word normal. What do we need the normal for? Well, just to be difficult, it turns out, that when we're on a flat mirror, we're better off measuring the angles from the vertical. If you have a protractor, that means if you measure this angle, let me make it quite clear. You're using your protractor to measure from the vertical to the angle, not from the flat on the mirror. And you'll see why later that's important. It's not important in plain mirrors. This part you do on your own. Now this is an appropriate moment for a story. When I was a young man of about 12 years of age, my sister took me into a biker bar to play pool with some of her Hells Angels friends, and I'm not making that up. 
Now, this is back in the 1970s, back when kids were told to leave the house and not come home till after dark, and you just did whatever you wanted, and there was no way for parents to track your whereabouts. I even rode my bicycle by accident on the 401 for a bit. So um, a lot of my generation didn't survive into adulthood, but we're pretty savvy. So nobody cared if a person brought a boy or a child into a bar. They probably wouldn't even object if they saw me smoking a cigarette, but there was no alcohol. And I was trying to play pool with some of these Hells Angels guys. And one of them, like, that was a friend of my sister whose name was, like, Ice Pick or something. And he, and he had, like, Mama Didn't Love Me tattoos all over. And he tried to show me the physics of playing pool, why I couldn't do bank shots. And he taught me what the little diamonds mean on the pool table. So the first thing he did was <clears throat> he showed me right here that um, you could establish a vector, a line, or a ray, if you like, from the white ball to one of the diamonds on the pool table. And that would be the trajectory you're going to shoot the ball on. Now, where would it go? He would then establish a normal, a 90 degrees to the pool table, to show me the angle here between the direction the white ball was going to take and the normal was the angle that it was going to strike that this uh, diamond at. And then he took another pool cue and he laid it out like this to show me that the incident and reflected angles would be the same and then if I fired the pool ball like that it would guarantee go into the pocket. And then he took a fourth pool cue and beat to death one of the rival gang members. No, no, no. They were all well behaved. It was like the middle of the afternoon. My sister took me there. Uh, so sue me. She's dead now anyway, so it's not like you can endangering a child. Anyway, I learned the laws of reflection from a Hells Angels biker. And years later, I'm in school, and the physics teacher is doing reflection rules. And I'm like, hey, I learned that on a pool table with a Hells Angels and my sister in a bar years ago. And whoa. Luckily, it was still the 80s, and that just didn't throw the teacher a curve at all. Anyway, underneath this slide, you will see two links, and those two links will lead you to two videos, one with Bugs Bunny and the other with a pool shark, and they will show you all the physics you want, all the rules of reflection and trigonometry that exist on a pool table. So my first physics lesson ever was from a Hell's Angel. How cool is that? Now we're going to look at single beam reflection. If you understood the pool story, we're off to the races now. All we have to do is pick something as a symbol for light. I don't know, a cloud, a moon, a star, a heart. Oh, let's go with the star. Sun. Yeah, same thing. Oh, and let's make it festive. There we go, and drop shadow it, because it's my favorite thing to do. And we're going to send a beam of light in to this mirror from a star. But I'm going to move it out of the way for the moment, because we need to put our normal on. Normal, normal, yes, mother. And I held the shift key down to get that straight line. But the beauty is, if I give you the grid in the background, you don't actually need to draw the normal, because, like, every one of those grid lines is the normal. And that's why I like to include the grid. Now we're going to send a beam of light in to the mirror from some source, like this star. And I'm going to take a line, or I might actually take the arrow. And I'm going to take a line and go all the way in, and right there strike the mirror. And let's embiggen the line a bit, drop shadow it. And I'm going to choose it to be a slightly different color, so I know it's a ray of light and not the line. There's our angle going in. Now, if you notice, it's about three squares down here, but we're going to use that trick to flip it. Firstly, though, let's mark the angle. Choose the arc tool. Make an angle. You can rotate her a little bit in there. Squeeze it in. Shrink it down. Puff it up. Drop shadow it and slide her in there. And there's the angle it makes with the normal. And this angle, the striking angle, gets a name. We're going to call it letter I. And again, your blind old teacher wants you to fluff that letter up. Get her up there nice in size. 
And that's our incident angle. This obnoxious text box, shrink it. Don't I have a lovely voice these past couple of weeks? Over here, we're going to define that. Incident angle I. And that's all we have to say, basically. And I'm going to puffer up there. Let's bold that one. Shrink this a bit. And I'm going to put a background color in and pop it. The incident angle and the incident ray, that's the ingoing. Now, how do we make the outgoing? Well, if you paid attention to the Hells Angels lesson, the angle it strikes at is the angle it <coughs> leaves at. <coughs> oh, I've given up trying to re-record when I'm after I've coughing because the past couple of weeks it's just happening too often. And there's our outgoing angle. But it's pointing the wrong way, so we gotta switch the arrowheads up there. And let's give it another color. I'm feeling hot pink would be it. So that's the outgoing angle. Now the incident angle is going in. The outgoing angle is a reflected angle. So I'm going to copy this. Go up a little bit. <coughs> Whoa. You ever cough so bad your, your eyes actually like pulsate the vision changes? And this one is called the reflected angle R. I need to get rid of that bowl that's hanging around. There we go. There's the reflected angle. This is where the beam would go. Now, would you see it? Yeah, if your eye was in the path, that's when you're like shining, uh, reflecting light in someone's <laughs> eyes. How would we draw your eyes? We do it like this. We pick a shape like this. We're gonna make a semicircle. Come on, come on. There we go. So I'm gonna just drag this down here a bit. And I'm gonna, that's a little too much. I'm gonna shrink it to about there. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it. Arrange, rotate, flip horizontally i got to get it out of the way of that line there. And to make it an eyeball, here is the drawing in physics again. We do this. And that's the symbol for a human eye looking at something. Isn't that that artistry like you've never seen before? I'm going to try to just snag the three. Ah, got too many things. What's in there? What's else in there? One, shift, two, three. Three things selected. Arrange group and fluff them up a bit and there's my eyeball and so if your eye was over here looking you would go ow the sun shone in my eyes so that's how we do a single beam next we want to see is can we put together multiple reflections to see where our brain thought the light came from so we're going to look at a technique called triangulation next. Now we're going to try some triangulation. Your brain loves to anticipate. And I've talked this about this before. We're bad um, in school about punishing anticipation. We're always like, wait for it. But your brain can't help but to see the imaginary convergence of those three lines. You can pretty much look at the spot in your mind's eye where they seem to be coming from, even if they aren't. How would we do this on screen? It's real simple. We backtrack these arrows. So if I go like this, and I go back here, that's where that arrow seems to come from. Fluff it up, switch it to a dotted line. That means, the dotted line means that is not what we actually saw. That is our projection, where we think it was coming from. So we use a dotted line. This one, seems to be coming from back here. Mm -hmm. And fluffy, dotily, drop shadowy. And that one seems to be coming from there. And this one seems to be coming from back here. Okay. Yep. <coughs> <coughs> 
there is what we call a virtual intersection. The beams of light did not really intersect. These three arrows did not intersect, but your brain can backtrack them and go, that's where the, the center of that action was. If this was gunfire in the army, you'd know where to drop your artillery shell. You'd go, I got it, I figured out the location. Let's take an example in real life how you can do this. A bomb goes off behind my, my drawn-in hill. It's not a real hill, just so you... Because I know my CGI is so incredible. Can you picture where the center of that explosion was? Do you have enough visual information to imagine, was it on the left side of the hill, the center, the right side? Was it at ground level? Was it part way up? Can you picture that? Well, you can not only picture it, you can draw it. These rays are not like beams of light. They are subject to gravity. But we can still go, look, that one came from down here. So that one's lined up there. Let's puff it up really good. Make it a color Kaladi's eyes can see. That's not going to be too good for me. I'll switch to a... Sort of, I can see that one. There we go. There's one beam. And I see... Oh, look at... Oh, come on. This one down here seems to be one that way. Uh, Pluff it up. Color again, and uh, let's go to the other side here. Come on, I click you. Obey me. That one seems to be coming from there, and oh, what have we got here? Um, that one seems to be coming from there. So if you follow these back, you see where they seem to intersect. That's all I want you to draw. And where do you find your intersection? And then we can do this and go. Wait for it. Look at so close, right? It it came in pretty close. So this technique of triangulation works really well. So I'd like you to try that. <clears throat> now, just to clear something up, we did do this binocular vision bit, and I showed you the piece from um, the Light Horseman. Your brain can still do this ray tracing, this trigonometry, even in a single eye. It won't give you the uh, distance very well. You don't have very good depth perception at all with one eye, but you can still position objects, get the shape of them when your brain triangulates. And if you're in a familiar room and you're near people, um, you can get along with one eye with sufficient training because you can judge things from the background. In outer space though, man, it's really screwed when you try to see in outer space. So let's see if we can triangulate an actual image. So we're going to go back <coughs> to putting an object on. This time, the time-honored object on a mirror uh, is an arrow. So set yourself up a nice plump arrow. Tip it a little bit. That's kind of tradition. And we're going to try to decide how we can locate its image. You know, if you're out here looking at that mirror, you know already what you're expecting to see. You're expecting to see an image on the other side, and there's a reason I put it on a tilt. Because you know it's going to be swapped left and right. So you already have an expectation that somewhere behind the mirror there's going to be an image back there. Okay? You know that from like age two, that there should be an image of that arrow on the other side. So let's see if our ray tracing works. Triangulation. Think about it. Three. Three rays. We're going to send in three rays to the mirror. Always, always start with the easy one. Start with holding the shift key and go straight into the mirror. That's the first incident ray. Now think about it without having even met me. You kick a ball straight to a wall, what will it do? It's going to come straight back. So you draw another arrow coming straight back and that's the reflected ray and if necessary 
if it helps you make it a different color. Now here's what the textbooks will do. They will shove the one arrow over just so you can see it's a different one, but they're actually on top of each other. So there's a better way that we're working on screen that you can make this clear to yourself. Really beef that in going one up a bit. Maybe that's a little too much. Oh, there. And then when you put the green one back on top, <clears throat> you can see that it's an in and an out. Now, if you're observing this and your brain is over here, you know that when you're looking at a reflection, you know it's the reflection of an object in front. But even <laughs> knowing this, doesn't your brain want to see it coming from behind the mirror? Doesn't your brain actually trick you into believing that that beam came from behind the mirror and the only reason you know better is intelligence? But how many times in your life have you been tricked into believing there was something behind a mirror and then you realize, oh, it's a mirror. <coughs> so, the real light is on the right side. This dotted line is just your brain being tricked and your, actually your eye is being tricked and your intelligence overrules it. Now, how many other beams of light are there? Infinity. There's as many beams as you ever want. We only need three. So remember, this object is going to emit light in all directions. Like this. We just need to pick three imaginary rays. And, and in class, we could do this with little laser pointers. So if you want to send in another ray like this, well, well, no, it's going to be hard to measure the angle. Go big. Go as big as you want. All right? As high as you can go, and you've got that. Now remember, we're supposed to draw the normal on to do our reflection. The normal right here. Okay? But we don't need to, because I have been so kind, I gave you the grid. The grid is the normals. And I've also showed you the trick. So to save yourself a little bit of time here, you don't need... You don't need no stinking normal on this, man. You can skip it. So I'm just going to take my normal and fade it right out there. You don't even need it. All you have to do now is make the reflection of this ray. And how did we do that before? Control C, Control V. Arrange, rotate, flip vertically, and we're going to swap the arrowheads, and now we're going to move it up here. That's the second ray. If your <coughs> eyeball was up here, where would you perceive that ray coming from? Well, your eye would say, look, boing, boing, in the dark room, your brain having no further information, your brain's going to assume the ray came from back here. Okay? I'll beef it up. I'll gray it out a bit. And I'll dot her up. There it is. Your brain now sees the light from this. It's tracked coming off the mirror. Two separate angles that now have your brain convinced that there's an object back here. Now you might say, how come... But this, this beam here, the green one, didn't land in his eye. He can't see both beams at once. You do realize the pupil of your eye is incredibly tiny. There's no way I could make this diagram to scale. If we did one of these diagrams to scale and only track the beams at your eye, do you realize how tiny of an angle that would be? Don't think that the mirror has to match and land the rays in your eye. Right? We're talking about tracking uh, 
think about it. If you're standing three meters from a bathroom mirror, the only light that gets in your eye has to fit through your pupil. Try to imagine that angle from the mirror to your eyeball only changing a centimeter. We cannot draw them to scale, right? You really have to think in this case that the eye is ginormous and it's able to take in all this light. So the eyeball would be like that, okay? That used to confuse me a lot when I was in high school. Now to clinch it, let's do one more ray. We're gonna take one more ray and this time we're gonna go low, down like that. Oh, bump, 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 bump. And now we reflect it. Control C, Control V. Hell yeah. I did the press. I see the cursor is a flickering. Let's try that again. Control C, Control V. Haha. <clears throat> Arrange, rotate, flip vertically. And then swap the arrowheads, you punk. There we go. And oh, down we, down we go. There's the third ray. <clears throat> now, back we go. Where does our brain think it's saw coming from? Our brain knows that the object is actually over here. But if your eyeball's out here, your brain goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. she came right from back there, she did. And you dot her up. And yeah, gray it out. And yeah, you can even know it's already drop shadowed. <clears throat> and that's where your brain. Now, imagine coming into the classroom and seeing this finished. Imagine um, just reading my finished thing. So some of you are saying, why can't we just copy it? Because it doesn't mean anything unless you do it yourself. Okay? Now your brain, I don't know how it does it, your brain goes, got it. Somehow, think about this, magically, your brain was able to determine that these three rays going in entirely different directions all originated from the same point. But your brain will sa happily make the image, right? Even though you know the mirror is there, your brain will still create the magical room behind. So sure enough, there it is. Here's the mirror image, but remember, left to right flip. That's why we always um, put the on the angle, so you can e include the fact that the mirror image flips sides, and then we dot it up, <clears throat> and typically gray it out. Right? Isn't this much more civilized than pen and pencil and ruler? So that's how your eye perceives an image in a flat mirror. And we won't do any more of these. We're just going to do a few other little applications of the flat mirror. And this ray diagram on the easiest mirror is actually about the hardest one for students to do. So this is as hard as it possibly gets. The other ones are fun and they're not nearly as confusing as this one. So this, this particular diagram has a high rate of misunderstanding and you might need to go over it a couple of times. In terms of testing it, no, I would not ask you on a test to draw one of these. We don't have that kind of time in the online environment and there's no easy way of assessing it as a test. So if you were able to follow this and complete this diagram with me, um, that is the test basically for our online. Now this one is really fun here. This one is called a corner mirror or retro reflector. And if you have the large mirrors at home that you can set them up to be at a 90 degree angle and look straight on, you're, you, you'll be able to read uh, the reflections. They'll be the normal way around. They're really cool. So if you stand in front of two mirrors arranged this way and you stand right here on the center line, you will be able to read what's on your t-shirt. And when you raise your hand, the opposite hand in the mirror will be raised. Um, it's too bad we're not in school. You can't see that demo. <clears throat> but it just takes two mirrors. You can stand up. Let's say a beam of light comes from this sun. And it comes into the mirror. So hold it down. And you see that stupidity where it just went up? Like that? 
it, it can be really a pain to get it to stay straight. Now reflect it from that normal. And how do we get the normal in here? Well, that's a problem. But I did set the mirror up to 45 degrees exactly. So you will find that if you hold the shift down, you'll get a lock. You'll be able to find that. Now, the reflect... I'm going to dim this out here. The reflection is going to go straight up. Like this. going to go that way and then it's going to turn around and go right back out the way and again these are more more um, fun when you wrong way gotta go this way they're more fun to do in reality but beam will go right back the way it came from this is what's in bicycle reflectors if you look very carefully in them these retro reflectors send the beam of light right back the way it came. The missions on the moon put retro reflectors or corner reflectors on the moon. Now, the ones they used were solid glass. They're prisms, not mirrors. But we'll see later that they're very similar. These corner reflectors will always send light directly back where it came from. And that's why when you look at this picture, they always show this funny crossed hairs. Now you see this one here has many more reflectors. Well, they put them on the moon. People can shoot a laser beam from Earth, hit the moon, and you'll see the flash of light where the astronaut left these mirrors behind. And they do that because they can accurately measure the position of the moon, uh, moon quakes, like earthquakes on the moon, and all sorts of other stuff. So again, of course, the, the tin foil hat people say they were never on the moon. There's no retro reflectors up there, but they're full of it. <clears throat> so, uh, can you shine a laser pointer at the moon and see the reflection? No. You need a laser beam that's powerful enough to require a license, and you have to know exactly where to aim. So you're still talking a multi-million dollar facility, but yes, the Earth shoots laser beams at the moon. Fortunately, there's no one on the moon to declare war on us for doing that. Here's a couple of fun problems that only involve tracing one ray. But you're going to have to move stuff around here. So <coughs> I want you to see if you can think your way to an answer using this basic rule. Whenever a beam of light goes into a mirror, whatever angle it strikes the mirror, it goes right back. So which parts of the body could this person see? Well, all you have to do is take a pretend beam of light and send it to the mirror. Can he see his nose? Well, you, you pretty much can say, yeah, a beam of light would go in for his nose, and then it's going to turn around and go right back. And I know it's not going to hit his nose bang on, but this isn't rocket science, dude. Here we're doing basic approximations, and you're like, yeah, look at it. It just goes like, the light left his nose, hit the mirror, came back. His eyes saw it. And it's like, could he see his crotch? I don't know. Block. So, I don't know. Let's say, could he see his hand? Could you find a beam of light that would leave his hand, hit the mirror, and go into his eye? Well, it can't be that one, because it's going to go straight back. What, what can you perceive... Is there an angle you could send in a beam where you think it would ricochet off the mirror and go into his eyes? It wants to stop there. So how do we do the reflected ray? Control C, Control V, and flip it. And swap the arrow heads. And you go that's really close, isn't it? I bet you if he moved a little bit closer to the mirror, he would see his hand. And you might go, but what if what if uh, we picked a beam that was a little lower? What if we chose this beam? Okay, let's see. Well, that one ricochet into his face. 
make a copy, flip it, swap the arrowhead so you got their correct direction, and let's move it up to where it would bounce. Yeah, all, almost bang on, eh? So can you see you would be able to eventually figure out which parts of his body could see, he could see, rather than just like asking, Mary, can you see your hand? Now, what about his foot? Well, the foot could send out a beam of light here. The foot could send a beam of light out here. The foot could send a beam of light out here. Do you think any of those could bounce into his eye? Well, I think if you just think this one, it's going to hit and go way off up and couldn't possibly be it. What about this one? Eh, you, you see that bounce angle? I, I bet you it's going to go too high. Let's check. I'm not going to bother changing the arrows right now. Oh yeah, look at that one. It's it's way off the Pluto. It's no idea where it's going. So, what do we do then? Let's try this guy. Get copy. Reflect it. And I'll drag it. Over. Oh, oh, that's close, isn't it? Ooh, that's so close to being able to strike him right in the kissa, right in the face. You see how close that's going to be? So here's the question. If you wanted to nail this, make that beam go right into his eye. Because right now it's close. If I extend this beam a bit, like that, it, it just parted his hair, it did lasse. He almost could see his feet. What would you do? Move him closer to the mirror or farther away? And that's what I want you to do on this. I want you to try again by taking the person and moving them farther from the mirror or moving them closer and try to see if you can figure out what position they would be at to see their feet. And it's going to take you about 10 minutes. And that's, I'm sorry, the best I can do to replace the missing labs. Now when we go into the, this gets a little bit trickier. Here's a guy in a room and he's like, I'm hiding. He'll never see me. Can you figure out if these two people can see each other? Now, here's the rookie mistake. You must not do this. Go, well, he's looking that way. Um, doesn't matter which way he's looking. That's not his eyesight. That's the light coming off of him. All right? The arrows are not where you're looking. They're the direction of light. And that is number one mistake students do, is they want to see light as this aggressive, your, your eyesight as you're staring. So what you have to do is take some light off this person. So let's start with his toe. His toe could send light into his mirror at the bottom, and the highest beam of light could come his toe would go there. But I think you don't even have to draw to know this beam of light is going to hit the mirror and off to the wall. So, where does this beam of light go? Well, let's see. Copy it. Flip it. Change the arrowhead. And move it up. And go, no way does the light from his toe ever, ever reach that guy. It's going to definitely hit the wall. So pick another part of his body. Go, I wonder if he is in the viewpoint. Then you could take light from his head, send it to the lowest spot on the mirror, and you could send it to the highest spot. Can you use your common sense to tell me, really, which one of those beams has any chance of bouncing out the door? You can tell me, if you kick the ball like that in a room, it's heading up to the the other wall there. So it's going to be this one here. You're going to make a copy, then reflect it. 
okay? And you put it up here, and you go, oh, goodness, that sucker's heading right out the door. We, we found one. It's going to go right out the door. And you go, where is it going to go? And you go, it's going to go out here. Well, unless he has eyesight in his ankle, he's not seeing that. It struck him in the feet. So, is there another one we could do? Yeah. Isn't this exciting? Isn't this so much better than watching Netflix? You might go, well, sir, you did the low one and you did the high one. Oh, I'll take the low road and you'll take the high one. What about the middle road? What if we tried right there? wonder where that would go. Hello? So, do you think you could find a, a beam of light that would leave the guy in the room and strike the other guy right in the frickin' face? And then you'd be able to tell me that he actually saw him. Then, what about the reverse? Is there any light coming from this guy that would... Oh, my room! Come back. So I want you to play with that and see what you can that question final exam and you got a couple copies that you can play with. So I'd like you to try that and definitely watch these it's on mirror cloaking uh, because we're we are slowly working our way towards invisibility technology and that's all we're going to do on the flat mirrors. Okay, so that's my repaired.